Love Thy Neighbor gaat over je neighborhood, zegt Dr. Ruth Valerio. Armoede en onrecht gaan namelijk vaak hand in hand met een ongezonde leefomgeving. Ruth Valerio is milieu- en sociaal activist, theoloog en auteur. Al twintig jaar woont ze in een arme buurt in Engeland en heeft ze positieve veranderingen gezien. Niet alleen door sociale programma's, maar ook door het planten van bomen en het zaaien van bloemen. Ruth neemt je mee in het thema Love Always Hopes. It was working, oh good, it was working two minutes ago, how did that happen? Love always hopes. This actually is possibly one of the best descriptions of love that I could have been asked to speak about here today. Because it's something that I am asked often as I travel around the place speaking, talking to people about issues of poverty and environment and justice. When it comes to the question section at the end, almost always someone will ask me, Ruth, be honest, do you actually have any hope? when you look out at the world, when you see the state that our world is in, is there any hope? And it's a good question for us to ask, isn't it? We live in a world where something like 300 million tons of plastic are produced every year. And about 8 million tons of that plastic finds its way into the seas. We've got good news when it comes to poverty. Over the last few decades, we've actually seen the rates of poverty almost halved. And yet, we live in a world of increasing inequality. Around 41% of people living in Africa live below the extreme poverty line of 1.9% dollars a day. And around the world, one in eight people will go to bed hungry tonight. That's unacceptable, isn't it? We live in a world where over the last 30 years, the animal population has decreased by about 66%. And in Germany alone, they have seen their insect population decrease by 76%. So it is indeed right for us to ask ourselves, where is hope? We've been sitting here today listening to some fantastic talks, hearing about justice, being called to live that out in our own lives, challenged to be actively engaged in justice, As we go from here, where will you find hope? How will you keep hopeful as you work to see transformation in your communities and in this world? The answer actually is found in this description that love always hopes. For love to flourish, for hope to flourish, it needs to be rooted in love. Love and hope go together. Let me tell you about two important things that have happened in recent months. The first one is something called the IPCC report. Can you put your hands up if you've heard of that? It happened just a few weeks ago. Yeah, just a very few of you. This is possibly the most important scientific report that has come out in our lifetime around climate change, really saying that we have to keep climate change to within 1.5 degrees of warming above pre-industrial limits. Over the years, I've been tracking these IPCC reports pretty much since they started, and I've seen them taking on greater and greater sense of urgency. Yes, climate change is happening. Yes, it's caused by us. Yes, it's caused by our human activity. Yes, we have to act. 
This latest report gave us 12 years for us to act if we are not going to experience runaway climate change that will lead to absolutely catastrophic results. One of the most important things to come out recently, and it spawned some discussion. Important people have written about it, commentated on it in newspapers and written blog posts. Our UK government has asked a particular committee to look at how it can respond to it and so on. I'm not sure that I've met any single person who has said to me that they are going to change their lives as a result of this report or has said something to me that they're going to do differently because of the report. The second thing that happened in recent months was the Blue Planet 2 series. And I think many of you have seen it here as well. You might, in, in those two pictures, you might instantly see the difference between the image of the IPCC report and the image of Blue Planet 2. With Blue Planet 2, it was this wonderful series that David Attenborough took us through on the television. And we were led through a number of programs where we experienced the wonder and the delight and the beauty of our seas and oceans and of the different living creatures that live there. And then when it came to the final one, we were then exposed to what we are doing to our seas and our planets. What happened? We fell in love. We were taken through this process of falling in love with our world, with the seas and the oceans and the, the incredible things that live there. And so it spawned a, a, a huge amount of activity and action. And I now, lot, now know lots of people who won't take a single-use plastic water bottle, they won't take a disposable cup, like, um, excuse me, the, one that we've, um, the ones that we've all been drinking from uh, today. Hopefully we'll find different ways of doing that another time. People have made all sorts of changes moving away from plastic in their lives. Why? Not because of a scientific report as important as that was, but because we fell in love. And so love is what will sustain us and is what will sustain our hope. The opposite of love actually isn't hate in English. The opposite of love is a word, apathy. I hope that might translate into Dutch. I wonder if you would just turn to the person next to you and tell them what the Dutch of apathy is, just to make sure you all know. Great, that's enough. Sounds like you all know. It's, it's where we just can't be bothered. We're not interested. We can't be bothered to do anything. Apathy literally means without feeling. It comes from the two Greek words, a for without and pathe, where we get sympathy from as well, feeling, without feeling. Where we have no love, where we have no feeling, then we can't be bothered. We won't act. We won't take action. The next slide is going to show you some trees. And these trees are from the estate that I live on. We moved on to a, a poor housing estate. We've lived there for about 23 years. And I've been really involved in working there and working to bring about transformation on that social housing estate. And these trees that you will see, I love them. I've, over the last 20 odd years, I've kind of grown up with them. Some of them I've actually planted myself with kids from the neighborhood and their parents. I have literally watched them grow up, these trees. I know them and I love them. If a developer was to come out and want to build on that particular area, they wouldn't think anything of knocking down those trees, would they? Because they don't know them, they don't love them. I love those trees. And trust me, if a developer came to knock them down, I would be out there with my arms around them, stopping, stopping those bulldozers coming in, because I love them. 
Love is what will sustain our hope. But it's not just any love. It's not a love that we make ourselves and conjure up out of the air. The love that always hopes is the love that comes from God and is rooted in God's love for what he has made. Genesis 1.31 tells us that God looked at all that he had made and he said, it is very good. The best translation of that actually is my translation, which is that God looked at all that he had made and he said, it is fantastic. I love it. This is amazing. Look at what I've made. Look at this incredible world. Have you seen it? Isn't this wonderful? This isn't a dispassionate God, an uninterested God who sits back and says, oh, yeah, that'll do for the time being until I can think of something better. This is a God who poured himself out into this world, into what he made. Theologians like to talk about God emptying himself, moving back, creating space that would then be filled by this amazing creation. John 3, 6, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. For years and years and years, I read that, and I read, for God so loved people that he gave his only son. And it was a real surprise when one day I looked at it and thought, oh, it doesn't say people. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And of course, people are a part of that world. And so God gave his only son for the whole creation, for all that he had made, both human and wider than human. God loves this world, and he loves all that is in it. He loves us. We are all made in God's image, and he loves the wider creation. And it is that love, that love of God, that we root ourselves in in order to sustain our hope in this hurting world. I want to ask you to take a few moments in silence. I'd like to ask you to close your eyes and to picture a place in the natural world that you love. It might be somewhere that you go to regularly doesn't have to be somewhere amazing out in a wilderness somewhere. It could just be a local park or your garden. Or it might be somewhere particularly special where God has spoken to you in the past. But I'd like you to close your eyes and to picture that place. And as you do that, can you picture yourself there? sitting there or standing or running. See yourself not as a consumer of that place, but as part of it, as part of the creation that is there. See yourself there. And as you do that, I invite you to ask God to fill you with love, to fill you with his love for that place. Ask him to give you his eyes for that place. And then from that place, I want to ask you in your mind to zoom out and to start getting a wider picture. See where that place is. What's the area around it? What's the community? What's the country that it's in? And zoom out until you are seeing that place within the context of the whole world. 
And as you do that, again, ask God to fill you with his love. To fill you with his love for that place, but for the world that he has created. Because if we are going to work for transformation and for change, it is not going to come from a sense of duty. It's not going to come from responsibility. It's going to come from a place of love. For hope to flourish, it needs to be sustained and rooted in God's love. Lord God, creator and sustainer and saviour, we want to commit ourselves to you and commit our hearts to you and our lives. We are here because we want to serve you. We want to see your justice come into this world for its people and for all living things. We ask that you would fill us with your love and help us to be hopeful people as we go from here in a little while and seek to serve you. Amen.